These are tough times for all of Europe's leading airlines. They will need robust business strategies to survive. But what are these strategies, and will all the airlines survive? Perhaps some need a cost-cutting strategy. Perhaps some need to exploit new market opportunities like new transatlantic routes. Perhaps some even need to lose their independence by a merger strategy with their rivals. What would you recommend? Ever since the 1980s, European airline profits have been under pressure. First from market liberalisation, as European governments have reduced price controls and opened up their markets. And second from new competition, as the low-cost budget airlines like Ryanair and EasyJet bring out new routes. However, at the same time, European airlines have been finding new profit opportunities. More people are flying than ever before to new destinations for much lower ticket prices. Underpinning these new market opportunities, there are three major business models. First, there is the long-haul model, particularly across the Atlantic between Europe and America. Agreements between national governments have meant that prices are at least partially controlled, capacity is limited, and profits kept high as a result. But this opportunity is open only to some of Europe's leading airlines, flying from major cities like Frankfurt, Paris and London, to New York, Washington and Los Angeles. In addition, the long-haul model will be under serious threat from new government agreements starting in 2009. Second, there is a business model based on a major difference in strategy between airlines operating hub-and-spoke models versus those working with point-to-point -point models. Hub-and-spoke airlines fly their airline customers to a central airport hub and then transfer them to other local destinations like the spokes of a wheel. Point-to-point -point airlines simply carry their customers from one point to another with no transfer service for onward destinations. Both models have their advantages and problems from a strategy perspective, and these are explored in the written case material. The third business model relates to the strategy of operating low-cost, no-frills airlines. These are almost always point-to-point -point airline types. There are regular timetable flights, but no meals, usually no seating plans, dynamic ticket pricing, and sometimes obscure airport locations away from major cities. Again, this material is explored more extensively in the written case. Even the low-cost airlines have been under pressure. Some have gone bust. Others have been finding ways of adding extra charges, like paying more for pieces of luggage, paying more for an airport check-in, and so on. But with the prices really low, who cares about service? Certainly, 80% of the customers are leisure customers, who simply want to reach their destinations. Even the 20% of airline business customers have been willing to forego greater comfort in some cases for the benefit of lower prices at least on the short-haul routes around Europe, with whatever airline gives the lowest price. And that, perhaps, is the real problem for the airlines from a strategy perspective. It's easy to switch between airline carriers. What competitive advantages do airlines possess over their rivals? What resources and capabilities do they have, or can they acquire, that will allow them to survive, especially as all airlines face at least three major new pressures? From rapidly rising fuel costs that are difficult to recover by charging higher fees. From new government deregulation of long-haul routes across the Atlantic that will increase competition on the existing profitable routes and from consumer and governmental pressure to reduce the number and duration of flights because of the impact on the world's resources and global warming. Again, there's more detail on these pressures in the written case material. These are tough times indeed, with strong and bold strategies being the only way forward for Europe's leading 
Airlines.